2020 was a big year for the games industry. From the beginning of a new console generation to several surprise hits to the launches of numerous games that fans had been anticipating for years, the last 12 months were marked by a number of momentous occasions. As we look back on the year and all that it brought with it, there's no shortage of excellent games to celebrate, and here, that's exactly what we're going to do. Join us as we count down Gaming Bolt's favorite games of the year, starting with number 25 and counting right down to our game of the year for 2020. Note, all entries and rankings were decided by an internal vote held among the entire Gaming Bolt staff. Number 25, F1 2020. We crowned F1 2020 as the winner in our best racing games category for 2020, so seeing it breaking into our overall top 25 shouldn't come as much of a surprise. Then again, the top-notch quality of F1 2020 isn't much of a surprise either. Year after year, Codemasters F1 series somehow manages to improve on itself and deliver some of the best, most finely tuned, and most authentic racing simulation experiences we've ever played. And this year, they outdid themselves yet again. For those who have more than a passing interest in the racing sim genre, it doesn't get better than this. Well, until next year, anyway. Number 24. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim Vanillaware has been quietly chugging out unique, engaging story-driven games with fresh new ideas for a while now. But this year, with 13 Sentinels, they caught the attention of the industry at large. And that's fitting enough too, because this is definitely the best game they've made to date. It tells an absolutely bonkers story that starts out in the most confusing manner possible, and takes its sweet time to get to the point. But when it clicks, it really clicks. With its non-linear storytelling and its gameplay that represents a mishmash of genres in a surprisingly cohesive manner, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is, without a doubt, one of the most surprisingly unforgettable games we've played all year. Number 23. Football Manager 2021 There aren't a lot of annual franchises out there that rarely miss a beat with their new releases. One of them is F1, which we spoke about earlier, and another is Sega and Sports Interactive's Football Manager. Cynics call it a spreadsheet simulator. Fans call it a ridiculously addictive and complex spreadsheet simulator. And this year's spreadsheet simulator was the best entry in Football Manager in years. New systems with meaningful depth, significant improvements to older systems, more polished production values, and a retention of the strengths that have always defined this series make Football Manager 2021 exactly as good as we knew it would be. Number 22. Cyberpunk 2077 PC CDPR have an impeccable pedigree in sowing rich narratives, and I am very glad to report that this is clearly the case in Cyberpunk 2077. Without entering into spoiler territory, the game offers you three life paths to choose from. Corporate, Nomad, and Street Kid. All the life paths start off differently, but they all eventually lead to the same critical path, though the ending can, of course, change depending on the choices you make throughout your journey. Cyberpunk 2077 has some visible flaws. Its poor implementation of law enforcement, inconsistent quality of side missions, and a somewhat weird crafting system are definite flaws. However, those flaws feel obscure and very minor in the grand scheme of things. An excellent and well-designed world, superb storytelling, great soundtrack, plenty of options to approach a mission, excellent graphics, and some of the best combat mechanics of the year make Cyberpunk 2077 a must-play for every open-world fan. Number 21, Neo 2. Neo 2 is one of the safest sequels we've played in recent memory, and while that might sound like a criticism on paper, it really isn't. That adherence to the excellent foundation established in the first Neo is what helps that sequel stand tall. And even though Neo 2 doesn't shake things up too much, it's not devoid of meaningful improvement to its predecessor's formula either. What we have here is a game that has all the strengths of Neo, most of all that grueling yet satisfying level of challenge and stellar combat, while also being a much more deeper and much more engaging role-playing experience. Number 20. Watch Dogs Legion Ubisoft have a spotty track record with Watch Dogs. The first game promised the world and ended up being little more than a mediocre open-world game, while the sequel managed to easily live up to its much more modest promises. Watch Dogs Legion went back to thinking outside the box with its play-as-anyone mechanic, and it succeeded in doing what it set out to do. Having literally infinite options to choose from in who and what you want to play as sets Legion apart from most other open-world games. 
It takes that crazy, unique idea and builds an impressive and systemic world around it. One where you can spend literally dozens of hours doing nothing but pushing against the limits of the game's systems, and usually being met with delightful results. Legion is not without its issues. The story is, to put it mildly, kind of crap, and the missions tend to be a bit too repetitive. But it deserves massive props for the excellent execution of its unique USP, if nothing else. Number 19. Doom Eternal Navigating its deftly designed combat arenas and juggling the Doom Slayer's arsenal of weapons and improved movement options while learning how to deal with the many, many different kinds of enemies the game throws at you never gets old. It's an incredible power trip, and Doom Eternal definitely makes you work for that feeling, owing to how surprisingly challenging it can be. But the effort that you put in is always rewarded handsomely. Ripping and tearing has never been so gratifying. Number 18. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales After knocking the ball out of the park with their debut in what is clearly going to be a massive new Spider-Man universe, Insomniac Games decided they needed to tell a shorter but crucial story before moving on to the next big entry in that franchise, and it turned out to be an excellent decision. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales is a success in every way imaginable. It introduces and firmly establishes Miles as a lovable new protagonist. It tells an excellent story that can be surprisingly moving. It improves upon the already stellar combat and traversal of the first game with Miles' Venom powers, and it sets up even more exciting new things for future installments in the series. The game might not have that weighty 2 in its name, but make no mistake, Miles Morales is unmissable. Number 17. Assassin's Creed Valhalla Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a massive open world with the potential for hundreds of hours of gameplay, and it still holds the promise of choice and consequence mechanics and extensive role-playing. But thanks to the smart way in which the game is structured and how it handles progression, things such as necessary grinding, rote open-world activities, and the resulting bloat have become a thing of the past. Number 16. Crash Bandicoot 4 – It's About Time after reviving Crash Bandicoot with three excellent remakes rolled into a single package in 2017, the logical next step for Activision was to move the series forward with a proper new sequel. They took that logical step this year, and developers Toys for Bob ensured that the beloved Bandicoot's return would be an appropriately delightful one. Tight platforming, vibrant visuals, varied and imaginative level design, and a deft balance between challenge and accessibility Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time has everything that we've ever wanted to see in a new Crash game for years, and is, as such, a worthy successor to Naughty Dog's original trilogy. Number 15. Black Mesa 2020 was a big year for Half-Life fans. Not only did we finally get that new mainline Half-Life sequel we've been waiting for for years, and more on that in a bit, we also got an excellent ground-up remake of the first Half-Life. After starting life as a fan-made mod over a decade ago, Black Mesa gradually morphed into a full-blown Valve-sanctioned production over the years, and the fruits of all that labor turned out to be very, very sweet indeed. Black Mesa looks incredible, plays like a dream, and captures the magic of that 1998 original, so much so that it's hard to believe that this isn't a AAA remake made by Valve itself. Number 14. Wasteland 3 in Exile Entertainment has always had a knack for telling captivating stories in deep and layered RPGs with extensive choice and consequence mechanics. But in 2020, they delivered what is probably their best work to date. Wasteland 3 is an RPG lover's dream. Stellar writing, memorable characters, fantastic world building, and impactful choices ensure that you're always immersed in its bleak world. Tactical mechanics and varied encounters come together to make for a combat system that starts off strong and only continues to get better as the game progresses. Nuanced progression mechanics and a vast array of customization options pave the way for a constant feeling of absolute control over how your party is growing. All in all, what we have here is a game that no fan of the role-playing genre should skip. Number 13. Yakuza Like a Dragon the best, most enduring franchises in the games industry have always sought to reinvent themselves, and have done it successfully. Resident Evil, The Legend of Zelda, God of War, Metal Gear Solid, Persona, Final Fantasy. All of these are massive properties that have never shied away from doing new things that, on paper, completely fly in the face of what their predecessors have been about. 
After wrapping up the story of Kazuma Kiryu, Yakuza took that same approach with this year's Yakuza Like a Dragon, and we could not be more pleased with the results. The decision to turn what is an action brawler into a full-fledged turn-based RPG seemed like a bizarre one at first, but clearly we should have never doubted their expertise. Like a Dragon is a dense, addictive RPG with ridiculous depth, but at the same time it has everything that you'd want a Yakuza game to have. A healthy dose of gleeful silliness, a compact yet densely populated world, a plethora of engaging side activities, a strong protagonist, characters to fall in love with, a story that goes to some truly incredible places, and so, so much more. Yakuza hits the ball out of the park with its first crack at the turn-based RPG genre, and we cannot wait to see where it goes from here. Number 12. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition Combat in Xenoblade Chronicles can be tough to get a grasp on at first. Taking place in real time, characters will automatically attack enemies in range. The goal is to keep track of different conditions and determine the right time to use arts, which can either be battle arts available on cooldowns or talent arts, which become available after a set number of attacks. Of course, quality of life improvements are the name of the game here, and Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition has a lot of them. Let's start with combat, which has a much more streamlined interface and distinctive icons during battles. Given how much there is to keep track of in fights, distinguishing between statuses and damage numbers more easily is always welcome. You also have more screen space to work with thanks to party member icons being less intrusive. Along with all of the old content receiving a graphical facelift and other quality of life changes, there is new story content to experience. Dubbed Future Connected, this is essentially an epilogue taking place one year after the events of the base game. Number 11. The Pathless the open world space has become extremely crowded in recent years, and its mainstream success has brought a certain level of stagnancy where most developers have settled into a comfortable and overly structured formula. Giant Squid's The Pathless is special for many reasons, but the biggest of them all is its willingness to defy those conventions. In The Pathless, exploration and traversal are completely grounded in the game's world itself. Rather than navigating a map and following markers and looking at a compass, you're looking at landmarks and making your way around places that have embedded themselves in your memory. It bolsters that bold vision with slick traversal mechanics and populates its world with varied and excellently designed puzzles that never fail to grab your attention. On top of that, the game proudly boasts of a beautiful art style, a wordless yet captivating story, and a beautiful soundtrack. All of these elements come together in what is one of the most unique and memorable open world games we've had the pleasure of playing in recent memory. Number 10. Ghost of Tsushima Sucker Punch were clearly sick of Ubisoft's unwillingness to give us an Assassin's Creed game set in feudal Japan, because with Ghost of Tsushima, they decided to take it upon themselves to deliver that experience. But calling Ghost of Tsushima an Assassin's Creed clone would be highly reductive. What we have here is a game that deftly toes the line between traditional, structured open-world design and more diegetic and organic exploration. Of course, what helps is the fact that the island of Tsushima is absolutely gorgeous, and full to the brim of scenes of majestic and exaggerated beauty that will take your breath away, thanks to visuals that stand tall in the industry from both artistic and technical standpoints. Add to that stellar combat, a captivating narrative, an excellent soundtrack, and stealth mechanics that essentially let you play as a 13th century Japanese version of Batman, and what you have is a game that was well worth the years of anticipation. Number 9. Hades Supergiant games have never missed the mark with any of their games, starting with Bastion, then with the underrated Transistor, then with the unique Pyre. They have constantly driven to develop fresh and unique experiences, and each time, they have done justice to their ideas with stellar execution. With Hades, however, they have ascended to altogether new heights that very few developers can hope to reach. Roguelike games have struggled with things such as constant sense of progression and storytelling for as long as they've been around, but Hades leaps over those struggles with surprising ease, almost as if those issues should never have existed in the first place. And it's not just impressive on that macro scale. Every second of Hades is an absolute blast, thanks to its beautiful art style, frantic and empowering combat, and the unique challenge that each of its vast variety of enemies and bosses pose. 
more than anything else. Hades is yet another game that proves that you don't need a thousand people and millions of dollars to make a world-beating video game. You just need an excellent idea and a crazy amount of talent to turn that idea into a reality. Number 8. Animal Crossing New Horizons Do you want to play a game about watering flowers, catching bugs, and paying off loans? You don't? Yeah, you do. You… you really do. Animal Crossing is all about doing that mundane stuff ad nauseum, and it's somehow made that formula work for years on end, and it works better than ever in New Horizons. There's a magical quality to Animal Crossing's charm that cannot be put into words, and that shines through brighter than ever in this year's Switch outing. As you begin setting up shop on your very own deserted island, you might not be expecting to have much fun. But New Horizons, like all Animal Crossing games, creeps up on you out of nowhere, and boom, before you know it, hundreds of hours have passed, and you're obsessing over buying that one couch that will fit perfectly in the living room of the house that you've spent hours and hours paying off exorbitant loans for. We know that doesn't sound fun, but it is way more than it should be. Number 7. Persona 5 Royal most developers would be satisfied with releasing a 100-hour-long RPG that's widely considered to be one of the greatest games ever made. Atlas is not most developers. Atlas took that 100-hour-long seminal RPG and turned it into a 130-hour-long unabashed masterpiece. Persona 5 Royal improves upon the vanilla Persona 5 so convincingly, it pretty much makes the original game meaningless in retrospect. From combat, to dungeon design, to countless little quality of life improvements that make the game's slice of life mechanics even better, Persona 5 Royal is brimming with enhancements that build on each other in significant ways. On top of that, there's a huge chunk of new content here for both newcomers and returning fans to experience. And that content is probably some of the best that the Persona team has ever produced, which is high praise indeed. Yes, it is a massive time investment. But like all good investments, it's also an incredibly rewarding one. Number 6. Dreams Media Molecule's Little Big Planet franchise was always at its best when it was focusing on its play, create, share mechanics. The actual platforming itself was mostly rather unremarkable. Dreams has been in the works in some form or another for nearly a decade, and while that might seem like an unusually long amount of time, Anyone who's played this game, if it can even be called a game, would tell you that that was time well spent. The sheer breadth of creation tools at your disposal here is staggering, but what makes them even more impressive is that Dreams manages to present those tools to players in surprisingly accessible and enjoyable ways. It's a game development engine that's also a game, a game that shows that creating games can be just as fun as playing them. And what's most impressive about Dreams is that it's a platform in and of itself, one that will, hopefully, continue to be fostered and continue to grow and improve even further for years to come. Number 5. Half-Life Alex. Half-Life 3 still isn't confirmed, but this year, Valve gave us Half-Life 3 in all but name. After a torturously long hiatus, not just for the series but for Valve as a AAA developer as well, they returned to the spotlight with Half-Life Alex, and predictably enough, they stole the show. Making a long-anticipated, full-fledged Half-Life sequel that is playable exclusively in VR was a bold choice, but you only need to play the game once to know that Alex really would not have worked out as well as it does any other way. It tells a typically strong story, in true Half-Life fashion. It combines first-person shooting and horror expertly, but what's most impressive about this game is how immersive and interactive it feels in its intricately developed VR environments. The gravity gloves are a perfect encapsulation of Valve's unbridled genius, and the painstaking detail that every single room and environment in the game exhibits tells you all you need to know about why we had to wait so long for the next great Half-Life game. And yes, it was absolutely worth the wait. Number 4. The Last of Us Part 2 There are many who say that The Last of Us didn't really need a sequel, and for a while, it seemed like Naughty Dog agreed with that notion. The first game ended on such a strong note, and capped off its story in such spectacular fashion that a sequel seemed completely unnecessary. When Naughty Dog did decide to go ahead with that sequel, they could have very easily just given us more of the same, and everybody would have been more than happy with a game like that. But they decided to take a risk, 
And though there are many who feel it didn't pay off, we feel it absolutely did. The Last of Us Part II tells a bold story, and it tells it in typically impactful and confident fashion. Yes, it falters every now and then, and it's not as airtight as its predecessor was, but it's incredibly ambitious, and the net result is still a massive win. Beyond that, on the gameplay side of things, this is easily Naughty Dog's best work ever. Excellent AI, immaculate level design, tense stealth, and scrappy combat all come together to make for one of the best linear stealth horror games we've ever played. Just as they did with The Last of Us, Naughty Dog have sent the PS4 off with a staggering achievement in The Last of Us Part 2, and we cannot wait to see what they do next. Number 3. Demon Souls From Software changed the industry in 2009. In most cases, a statement like that is a tad hyperbolic at best and a gross exaggeration at worst. But when it comes to Demon Souls, that's a cold hard fact. Remaking a game with that kind of a legacy would be a daunting task for even the most talented developers in the world. But as Bluepoint games have proven over the years, they are never ones to back down from a challenge. And just as they did with Shadow of the Colossus in 2018, they have developed an excellent recreation of Demon Souls in 2020. That grueling challenge, that sense of elation when you overcome an insurmountable obstacle, those thrilling boss fights, those gothic and beautiful environments, all of those things that made the original Demon Souls so iconic are present and accounted for in the remake. They are, in fact, even better than before. On top of that, as the only major next-gen exclusive game we've seen so far, Demon Souls is also a visual showcase that hints at exciting technological advancements for the medium in the years to come. Number 2. Ori in the Will of the Wisps Alongside the likes of Axiom Verge and Hollow Knight, Ori in the Blind Forest has often been credited for bringing about the resurgence of the Metroidvania genre in recent years. Its sequel, Ori in the Will of the Wisps, does what most sequels can only ever dream of doing. It blows its already legendary predecessor out of the water in almost every way imaginable. Blind Forest burrowed its way into our hearts thanks to its beautiful visuals and music, its tight platforming and intricate level design, and of course, its unexpectedly moving storytelling. Will of the Wisps does all of that, but does it much, much better. But it's not satisfied with just those iterative improvements. It also brings in a completely new and significantly improved combat system, one that is constantly flashy and thrilling and shines bright as a star on more than one occasion, especially in the spectacular boss fights. The world you explore is also much larger, the level design much more intricate, the new progression system much more layered and engaging, the side activities just as engaging as the critical path itself. Ori in the Will of the Wisps is an unrelenting triumph that firmly establishes Moon Studios as one of the best Metroidvania developers in the industry. Calling it one of the best games in the Xbox One's library and one of the best games to have ever been published by Microsoft would not be an exaggeration in the slightest. Gaming Bolt's 2020 Game of the Year Final Fantasy VII Remake I'm fine. Here, this is for you. Huh? A flower? That's right. It's a gift. You know, for scaring those things away. What things? Never mind. Think of it as a memento. Just my luck. I heard that, you know. How much? Well, that depends on the customer. In your case... <laughs> it's on the house. Huh? Lovers used to give these when they were reunited. <sighs> Look, I'm involved in things. Dangerous things. Oh, I'm sure you are. So? So keep your distance. In 1997, Square Enix released Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation and changed the face of the industry, setting a new standard for strong characters, storytelling in games, and what a globe-trotting epic adventure can look like in this medium. In 2005, Square Enix toyed with the hearts of millions when they showed off a glorious tech demo of a reimagined Final Fantasy VII to show off what their new tools could accomplish on the PlayStation 3, and demand for a remake grew. 
That demand grew to epic proportions over the course of the next decade. And in 2015, the promise was made at last. After five more years of restless anticipation, Final Fantasy VII Remake finally came out in 2020. And really, there was no way the game could have lived up to all of the hype. And yet, that's exactly what it did. Final Fantasy VII Remake is incredible, and we can say that without any reservations. It makes the bold decision to only cover the first five hours of the original game and spread them out over a full-fledged 30-hour long RPG. It makes the bold decision to make some shocking changes to the original story, with twists that you will not see coming. It makes bold decision after bold decision, and impossibly enough, it never misses a beat. Final Fantasy VII Remake looks gorgeous. It tells an excellent story that keeps both newcomers and veteran fans on their toes. It has a spectacular combat system that is the culmination of years of attempts to blend action and turn-based fighting. It brings its cast of characters to life in a way that surpasses even our wildest expectations. It has a brilliant soundtrack. There is just so much to love in this game, so much that refuses to buckle under the weight of 15 years of anticipation, so much that should not have worked, but works like a dream. It's the best Final Fantasy game in years, and a dream come true for everyone who was waiting for this moment for literally over a decade. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.